What's happening, polite society? I hope you had a good week. Well, you can say many things about Steven Anderson, and over the years, people have. But the one thing that you cannot say about Mr. Anderson is that he's boring. And speaking of nuts, I have a nut here, okay? And this is a bolt, okay? So listen, this is what a normal person does, all right? See, I got the bolt right here, represent the male, right? We got the nut right here, represent the female, all right? This is what normal people do, okay? This is what, now let me show you what insanity says to do. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I've been putting off making this video for a while now because I actually like the guy. But as a Christian YouTuber, I have to put my own personal feelings aside and be consistent and faithful to the Word of God, even when I find a specific church leader's charisma and style engaging. So coming up, I'll be providing a critique of the controversial NIFB Bible teacher's views. As a preface, I recognize that there are many in both the IFB and the NIFB who do not support or endorse many of Mr. Anderson's teachings. I know that one teacher does not speak on behalf of you all. I also want those of you who are students of Mr. Anderson to be aware of the fact that my intention here is not to slam Stephen in any way. I'm simply going to be responding to some comments that he has made, which I find troubling. All right, let's delve in. Stephen Anderson is the pastor of Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. Mr. Anderson has over 120,000 YouTube subscribers and a large following in general, especially in the United States. The NIFB teacher is an outstanding orator who is also fluent in German. He has an upfront, in-your-face persona and is never afraid to share his thoughts on any subject. But over the years, Anderson has made many false, dangerous, and blatantly unbiblical statements. Why I hate Barack Obama. That's my sermon tonight. You're going to tell me I'm supposed to pray for God to give him a good lunch tomorrow while he's in Phoenix, Arizona. Nope. I'm not going to pray for his good. I'm going to pray that he dies and goes to hell. Barack Obama is without question the single worst president in American history. His abuse of executive power exceeded even that of his heavy-handed predecessor, George W. Bush. In addition, the 44th Commander-in-Chief was an advocate of late-term abortions. While running for president in 2008, Obama told a Planned Parenthood audience that one of his first acts in office would be to sign the Extreme Freedom of Choice Act, which would invalidate the federal partial birth abortion ban, eliminate parental notification laws, and likely lead to public financing of abortion. In context, prior to Mr. Anderson's statement about praying for Obama to go to hell, the NIFB teacher did remark that the former chief executive wanted to see countless children murdered through abortion. While I am completely on board with Stephen's pro-life position, the fact remains that we as Christians are called to pray for our leaders. That does not mean that we are to pray for their success and their godless anti-biblical policies, but we are to pray, first and foremost, that they be converted. At the same time, I believe very firmly that people who are in positions of authority that promote horrific wickedness will have to answer to God for that. Unless President Obama repents of his past actions and seeks God for forgiveness, there will be a day when he will have to stand before God and he will not be able to say, it was just politics, man. The issues in our society are moral issues and God is concerned about them, especially abortion. Here is a clip where Stephen makes some comments about the 2016 Orlando nightclub shooting. Here's the good news and the bad news about this. You know, the good news is that there's 50 less pedophiles in this world because you know, these homosexuals are a bunch of disgusting perverts and pedophiles. That's who was a victim here, are a bunch of just disgusting homosexuals at a gay bar, okay? All right, a couple of things here. Firstly, he's making an enormous presumption in stating that all 50 of these individuals were pedophiles. It completely assumes facts which are not in evidence. Secondly, as Christians, our goal should be to reach out to the homosexual community and preach the gospel to them so that we can be the means to bring in as many people as possible into the kingdom of God. I don't have any advice for homosexuals except to put a bullet in your own head so that you don't molest my kids or anyone else's kids. Completely untrue and unfounded. All homosexuals are not pedophiles. That is just a blatantly false statement. I've studied criminology extensively, read thousands and thousands of case studies, and I can promise you that the vast majority of pedophiles are heterosexuals, not homosexuals. And there also seems to be a strong pharisaical component to his statement here. He says that gay people deserve death. Um, every single one of us deserves death. 
both physical and eternal. It is only because of the beautiful grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that we have been rescued from eternal death. And it is only because of God's unmerited mercy that we continue to have oxygen for a single second. So is Mr. Anderson suggesting that we not reach out and preach the gospel to the homosexual community? What about prostitutes and sinners? Oh, that's right. That Jesus guy reached out to them, didn't he? I think we're going to follow his example on this one. And using the F word to describe individuals who have same-sex attraction, which Mr. Anderson has done many, many times, is definitely not in accordance with speaking the truth in love. In addition to these perilous statements, Mr. Anderson has made slanderous remarks about influential Christian leaders like James White and Jeff Durbin. Well, there's a guy in our town here, a false prophet. His name is, uh, I believe his name is Jeff Durbin. And he passed a church called the Apologia Church. I call it the Apostasia Church. But this false prophet, this wicked dog. Pastor Jeff is not a wicked dog, and he's not a false prophet. He's a solid Reformed Baptist pastor. An Apologia is not an apostate church. They are part of a solid Calvinistic denomination that adheres to the 1689 London Confession of Faith because they always are into drinking at these churches. And you know what? This Durbin is a drunk. Yeah. He's a drunk. Yeah. Jeff Durbin's a drunk. His wife's a drunk. They're drunks. Yeah, Pastor Durbin doesn't even like the taste of alcohol. That's a totally false statement that's been well documented and unrefuted by Mr. Anderson. Additionally, in this sermon, the NIFB leader went on to attack Jeff's wardrobe and bemoaned how horrible Calvinism is. Anderson has also falsely accused Jeff of being demon-possessed, but the truth is that Pastor Durbin had a seizure. In addition to the many false allegations against Christian leaders, Mr. Anderson is also a strict King James onlyist. Now, I've got absolutely nothing against the King James Version of the Bible. It's a majestic translation written in beautiful English. But when KJV onlyists like Anderson take it a step further and claim that all modern translations are satanic, then I have to respectfully disagree because I have studied the issue and I understand that they are in error. Let me show you right now that these versions are not just inferior to the King James. It's not just, well, the King James is the best one. I'm gonna show you and prove to you, listen to me now, that these versions are satanic. If you are a King James onlyist, then I do have a question for you. How do you defend the KJV's translation of Revelation 16.5 when not a single Greek manuscript contains the King James reading of and shalt be? More recently, Mr. Anderson has been unceremoniously kicking people out of his church in the most outlandish ways. Hey, sit down, sit down. What are you, what are you coming up here to do? You wanna you want come take over the service? Huh? What, what do you want? What? I just want a prayer rep. Get out of here. Can I get, can I get a little grace? No, no, no you can't. No, no. You're no. You, you get right out of here. Get him out of here. Drag this bozo out. Pull him out. Hey, him help him out. Let get him, him out. Him and you know what? If anybody wants to come up here and take over the service? We'll throw you out of here, buddy. This church is not a free-for-all. This isn't an open mic. This isn't a karaoke bar. Okay? I'm the man of God here. I meet the qualifications. I run this church. And if you don't like it, then get out. I'm not sure whether that individual was being escorted out for security purposes or whether he was being excommunicated. If it was the latter, well, I've read a lot of commentaries on 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and I'm certain that was not the proper way to conduct an excommunication. And the overseer of a church is not to be self-willed, quick-tempered, or pugnacious. Of course, Mr. Anderson has been repeatedly shown on mainstream media outlets. The goal is, of course, to pass the hateful venom of men like Anderson and Fred Phelps off as mainstream Christianity. Leftist journalist sites will almost never feature stories on men like Michael Brown, James White, and Justin Peters. I, of course, believe this is entirely intentional and designed to sully the name of authentic Christianity in the eyes of viewers. In summation, Stephen Anderson is a danger to the health and well-being of the church. I do believe the group he leads is a theological cult. A theological cult is a movement that claims to be Christian, but compromises, confuses, and contradicts essential Christian doctrine. And Mr. Anderson's truncated gospel certainly qualifies as heretical. Ladies and gents, if you have your own thoughts, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below. I'm sure you'll have a lot. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content on this channel, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right, and then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Saturday. Have an awesome week. And for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.